Kane Sport TV. We're here with uh, John Ruiz, who everybody's familiar with now because uh, he's the guy that's going to build the future stadium for Miami football, no matter what anybody says or what barriers they try to put in his way. So John, we just wanted the fans to get to know you a little bit and understand who you are and, and why Miami football has become your passion here recently. So you went to the University of Miami, correct? So I'm born and raised in Miami. I went to the University of Miami from 1984 through 1987. When I went there, you had that Canes team that had that swag. Uh, they won the championship in 1983 with Schnellenberger and then Jimmy Johnson came in. Uh, and I watched every game, you know, that was the thing to do when you were a student there. And it was super exciting in the Orange Bowl. Uh, you had, you know, Vinny Testaverde was a quarterback, Michael Irving, which everybody knows now because he ended up playing in the NFL, Hall of Famer, uh, Melvin Bratton, Alonzo Highsmith, uh, J.C. Penney running back the kicks. That's when Deion Sanders uh, was also playing at FSU. And I'll tell you something kind of funny or maybe somewhat ironic. So the first game I ever go to the University of Miami, New experience for me. You get out of high school, you've never experienced that. And I go and uh, the UM uh, kicks the, the ball off. And there's two players in the back, you know, waiting to receive the ball. I don't know who any of them are. You know, I'm 17 years old. First time ever to a college football game. And <clears throat> the guy all the way on the left side of the field catches the ball. And he throws it all the way to the other side. And the guy who gets the ball is Deion Sanders, and he raced all the way down the sideline. And it was like, you know, everything was like super emotional. And then that's when I got my kind of feet wet in that excitement. <clears throat> so I left there in 87. Fast forward, I have three kids. My son Johnny, which is the oldest of the three, played baseball for UM uh, for four years. And I traveled with the team everywhere. But my son Johnny was always going to the baseball camp since he was seven years old. Mm -hmm. He's now 27, so that's 20 years in the making. <clears throat> then my daughter Christy, who's now in UM Law School and graduates in May, was a sensation. She was dancing for the baseball team, the soccer teams, the football teams. And then my third, which is Alex, also played at the University of Miami. We've always been involved with the University of Miami. We've always contributed. But obviously now, because of a different financial level that we have, is why people may think, you know, you just came out of the woodworks. It's not that I came out of the woodworks, it's that we were able to do very well financially, and now's when we're able to do, you know, major things and contributions like we couldn't do before financially. So you've always been a successful businessman in the community, and you had success. Yes. But recently, what you're saying is, you know, your level of success went much higher and, and that's enabling you to maybe do some of the things that you would have liked to do through all the years. Right, so in 2014 I you know, started a company called MSP and I've designed some very revolutionary technology. The latest one saves lives which is basically uh, a platform where individuals can store all of their medical records and if they wanted to, to add their DNA and when they have any medical emergency, the EMS has all of your information. Right now, that doesn't exist. EMS goes to, you know, to the location wherever you're at, whether it's a car accident, a slip and fall, at your house, they know nothing about you. <clears throat> this revolutionizes medicine as far as the three major components. Doctors are looking at what's your past medical history and condition, uh, and what is it that you're experiencing now, and what should we do for you? The two latter facets of it are already there. <clears throat> what are you experiencing now? What can you do? For it? They don't have the prior information, which is some of the most critical and important information. We also, I also designed a system to re recover monies that the government pays in property. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, uh, after many years of work, the company was uh, announced as, the, as entering into a $32.6 billion merger and acquisition with a public company, which would essentially, since I own 70% of it, the numbers turn out to be 20 something billion dollars. And that's just what we announced at that point in time. There are a lot of other revolutionary things that we're putting together. And because all three of my kids graduated already from UM, 
They're actually involved in the business. <clears throat> They're helping. And we all have a passion for UM. And, and because of everything that happened also, right? So it's also, UM has had a substantial downfall in terms of the football team and even somewhat the baseball team. So my son Johnny was in the first baseball team that didn't make the playoffs in 20-something years. And as a result of that, I realized that it was important to give back. So that's why people are seeing what's happening now. Uh, have you gone to football games all these years? You know, you talked about yeah. the 80s, but have you been going since then? Yeah, we have. We're, we're you know, regular season ticket holders, um, mm -hmm. and we go all the time. But again, you know, the truth of the matter is that the stadium's far away, and if it isn't a good game or if your team's winning, sometimes you just find a kind of like an excuse and you watch it on TV. We got to bring that back. You know, we have a great university, uh, not, and the football team is probably the anchor of why kids come to the University of Miami or to any college. You know, you want that college experience. So what you're doing basically is when you're you're going to the university, you want all these you know experiences to take with you for the rest of your life, and this is one of the key components of it. So all these years, you know, it's been a long time since you started going to games, and you know, obviously the program has not been doing as well. Right. Um, did that register with you a little bit as well? Like, you know, we've got to get this program back to a hundred percent. Not just for sports, but I think, you know, I, I've been very fortunate and lucky, but this, at the same time, I've been an innovator always, and I've learned through the course of the MSP business that what I know about data and medicine and law is, is a lot more than what a lot of people know in the country, uh, you know. And not to sound conceited, but it's just because of experiences. I think I know more about that than anybody in the country. So nobody can copy my systems, but that's registered to being able to do a lot of things in other places. I've also had production companies. So I know about audio and visual and TV <clears throat> and marketing. Uh, I, I used to air sporting activities for, for youth sporting uh, games. I, I've aired things for the Florida High School Athletic Association. So I have a lot of experience in that area. And because of that, I think that we are the perfect fit for the situation that the university found itself in. And luckily, I think we've done a lot, uh, you know, collectively uh, with the fans. The fans are fantastic. There's a lot of support by the fans. Uh, that's one of the things that surprised me the most, you know, how, how valuable the team is to the people. We formed a committee. In the committee, we have a substantial number of very recognizable names. My personal favorite is Jimmy Johnson because he was, you know, the coach when I was at the University of Miami. But we have, you know, uh, Alonzo Highsmith. We have DJ Williams. Uh, we have another one which is a, a, a favorite of mine, which is Uncle Luke, uh -huh. Luther Campbell from the Two Life Crew, which is very supportive of the university. But I also was in law school when he was uh, in, involved in the process of, you know, the First Amendment. So these are people that resonate with me and go far back and that I could teach my kids what this history of UM football, UM sports is all about. So you look at University of Miami, we'll, we'll, we'll just say football for now. I mean, obviously there's other sports, but there's so many needs. I mean, the program's been run on a shoestring for so long. They've <clears throat> fallen behind everybody in college football. The facilities aren't great. It can definitely be improved. What made you sink your feet into a stadium? I just think it's the one key component thing that not only the university needs, but the community needs. It brings people together. Um, when you see 50,000 people cheering for the same team, it doesn't matter what political affiliation you have, it doesn't matter what your profession is, nothing else matters. Because even people that you've had issues with in your life or you may disagree with on whatever uh, philosophical point there is at that one moment for that game you're all going for the same and rooting for the same team right mm -hmm. so it brings cohesiveness um, <clears throat> I also think it's great for the economy uh, I think it's great to keep people out of trouble because there's things to do uh, they're participating I think it's great for the athletes I think it's great for the school I think it's great for the education of the athletes and you're bringing life to the city of, of Coral Gable slash city of Miami Dade County. If you look at every other activity that exists in the world, whether it's Formula One, whether it's soccer, whether it's a concert, 
uh, whether it's ultra, whatever the activity there is, what are they trying to do? They're trying to bring activities to generate and promote the local economies, right? So mm -hmm. this is exactly what that is. Um, and then you have some opposition because it's going to create a lot of traffic. Well, how many games are there? <clears throat> and I always say, you know, everything in life is a balancing effect. What's the balancing effect? You're going to have traffic for six games, seven games, and then what's the upside? You have continuation of people, you know, ha renting at hotels, restaurants, flourishing, stores selling, just tourism in general. Uh, because a lot of people come from other places to come see. And a lot of people graduate from UM and though they will fly back and come back to watch the games, especially if it's a great team. So I think there's a lot of, of positiveness to that. So you kind of shocked everybody at first. Well, I'm going to build the stadium. And then when you said Bird Road in Lejeune, right. I, I think everybody just really lost their minds. Right. Was that for shock value or were you serious that you really want to build a stadium at Bird and Lejeune? No, I, I think that it's a great location. It's 25 acres. I don't know if people realize that there, there aren't 25 acres in a lot of places. I also think that Coral Gable Senior High would benefit substantially uh, if that's the location where it could go because the school could be improved, the students could participate. Uh, there's nothing that we've said that isn't a positive for whether it's the city, the community, the students, the schools, the athletes, the university, everything is a positive. There's nothing negative about making a school better and making their fields better and providing better infrastructure, better fiber optics, better classrooms, better ventilation. You know, there's a lot of issues with old structures. So, no, I just think people jump, jump the gun a lot of times and they just like somewhat of, a, of an opposition to whatever you say. You're never going to make everybody happy. Uh, I know there was a petition circulating that had maybe about 3,000 names that I heard, but there was one that had <clears throat> over 10,000 names. I will tell you that from what we've gathered um, through Twitter and other social media and people calling me and emailing me, we have like 95% support uh, for purposes of, of, of a stadium. So let's say, are, are you planning to build this yourself? Are you, are you planning to fund the entire project if you can find land? Right, so, so that's all a function of, do we have to make a deal with the city? Do I have to make a deal with the county? Who else is involved? We've gotten approached and, you know, I've signed confidential documentation. There's a lot of uh, support by a lot of companies that want naming rights and a bunch of other things. So generally speaking, what I can say is we don't need taxpayer support. Mm -hmm. So how we come up with it, you know, the, the straight answer is we obviously, our family has the money to do it on our own. The question is, where is it going to be? What is the protocol? What other potential activities could there be? at a stadium like this, you don't want to have a stadium and use it six days out of 365 days. That's not the way that the economy works in terms of that. You're going to have to find other uses for it. Has there been any thought to Tropical Park? Yes. Yeah. Uh, we flew in a helicopter, my son, Alex, and myself, just because the other ones going to make it. And we flew around uh, the entire county. And Tropical Park is, is a very good location. It's big. It has good arteries leading up to it. Uh, so it is a, a very attractive uh, location, but I think Tropical, Tropical Park, as opposed to some of the other locations, would, would benefit, and because of the size of it, from other uh, adjacent attributes to it. You know, we're looking at uh, not just for a football stadium, it'll be a football stadium, but perhaps other uh, facilities for U of sports as well, mm -hmm. or just sports in general, and then it becomes a bigger project with the county and the community, but the answer, the direct answer is yes, it's a very good location. Have you had a chance to speak to anybody at the county to see if there's any county receptiveness? So what we're doing, and, and I'm not going to take credit myself personally, my two boys, uh, Johnny and Alex, are very, very involved in reviewing everything from an architectural point of view and going out and, and we're hiring, you know, several companies to give us designs. And not until we do that do we then go to governmental officials, because you gotta have something with you to, to show them. So I'm just gonna, gonna go and, and, and provide them with the concepts until they're f fully formulated. So you got some stuff. Yeah, so, so when they see it, they wanna look at stuff. We're studying, you know, the arteries that get to it, where it's located, why it's feasible, what we think should be done with it, 
we're going to do studies in terms of budgets, uh, in terms of how it affects the economy. There's a lot of studies that go into it. Um, have you spoken to anybody at the university about it yet? I have. Um, I'm not at liberty to say the details of it because I, I think, like I've said before, uh, if I do something on my own, I'll say it, but when it involves other people, um, what I will tell you is, you know, I'm I've obviously graduated from UM. I'm a big supporter of the University of Miami. We support the baseball team uh, also. We have a suite at the baseball field. <clears throat> like I said, my kids played there. Yes, we have had conversations. Uh, the extent of those conversations, I don't want to reveal yet because there's a lot of things going on, including uh, donations that we're making. And, and I don't, that's not public, the amounts and how that's going to unfold. But I think it's very exciting, everything that's happening. The bottom line is you're getting involved in other areas also. Absolutely. Golden Canes with football. From, um, from top to bottom. Let's talk about your relationship with Mario Cristobal. I guess he's a, he's a relative in, in, in some way. Shape, he is uh, related to my uh, children's mother, oh, wow. Myra Ruiz. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but that, that didn't really play a role. I mean, at the end of the day, Mario is his own person. Uh, he's an amazing individual. Uh, he's got that firepower. I love him. Uh, forgetting about, you know, what relationship there is. At the end of the day, you can't hire somebody because they got a relationship with you. you got to hire the real deal. And the guy's the real deal. Um, and, and you've seen just, you know, players gravitating towards that. There's this, this excitement, right? This buzz of, I want to be there. I want to be at that game. Uh, I came up with a slogan maybe about a month ago. It's called, The Time Is Now. And ironically, without knowing, he said at the press conference, the time is now. And the time is now. Were you involved with the Moss Brothers? And, and I some, know the Moss Brothers. And yes. some of the people that were involved in bringing Mario here. Were, were you involved at all in any uh, of that? All I will say is that I know everybody. So, but you were supportive, obviously. A hundred percent. Mario coming to be coach. So, is there a chance that you'll get involved in other areas of football? You know, maybe helping with some of the facilities on campus? Um, I can tell you that from top to bottom, we will be very involved with the University of Miami uh, to, to make it all as best as possible. You know, I think that something that a lot of people don't relate to real well is that when people like yourself, when you, you, you have success like, like, like you've had, you, you like to get involved in, in things that are like a passion. Yes. You know, for you, you can, you, know, you can only have so many homes and right. so many boats and and things like that, and, and it, it kind of like rounds out your life a little bit to have outlets like this. Is, is, is Miami football evolving into that kind of outlet for so you? So look, I do a lot for a lot of different organizations. <clears throat> I mean, I just donated $10 million to Westminster uh, uh, Academy. Um, so I think what people need to understand, look, I've worked very hard in my life. Uh, I started with, you know, getting a loan from my dad for 800 bucks with his credit card. So I started from the bottom up. What people need to understand is, number one, you got to work hard, but you got to have luck. And I consider myself a lucky person because I've been at the right place at the right time, but I've executed upon it, right? So I, nobody could say that I didn't work for it. I sleep three, three and a half hours a night. I'm a workhorse. Nobody can outwork me. Um, I'm a trial attorney. <clears throat> I've reached, you know, probably top level at, at my career. I try my own cases, very involved in everything that I do. But there's only three things you can do with money. You can either do bad things with it and think you're powerful and that you can run over people, or you could do nothing, or you could do what I consider to be positive. And what I consider to be positive is what I'm doing now. I'm donating to schools. I've always focused on the youth and the elderly. And to me, the youth is, you know, around that 22, 23 year old, year old person that still doesn't have enough experience, but is still already an adult and you can provide them with some guidance or a good amount of guidance. And then the elderly, because there comes a point in time in life that because of your mental and physical abilities, you can't do what you used to do before. <clears throat> Those are the two areas that I focused on. And I've always been involved with the youth. It's not just now. I've always supported schools, athletes. Um, one of the things that you know I think is good that I pride myself at is I bring every summer 20 to 30 kids, whether they're in high school, college, or law school, or in any 
potential profession, to learn in my office what it is to work in an environment. And I counsel them. We have big problems with uh, alcohol, we have big problems with drugs. And, you know, I've never done a drug in my life and I don't drink at all. <clears throat> and I'm not criticizing anybody that does it, but I think those are things that harm our society. And if I can just do, you know, one thing for one person, that's a big, big chunk of, you know, relief for at least that one person. When we've developed the technologies that we have, our technologies will save millions of lives. That's not money, that's, you know, you take that with you, right? So when you reach a certain stage and you have a certain amount of money, it's not what, it, it's not what drives you. So everybody thinks about money and money and money, but money doesn't make you or, or change you. What you can do with the money is really what makes you happy, right? Now, you can make yourself happy or you can make others happy. And I've always been a person that, you know, I want to be happy myself, but if I can make other people happy, to be honest with you, that makes me happier than making myself happy. And, and people's <clears throat> tendency is, people don't believe that. Like, you know, people are always skeptical. I think, you know, I think society you know. as a whole is always skeptical of what people do and why they do it and the motivation. But, you know, once people know me and know who I am for real, they understand that because they've known me for a long time and they know that it's just the way that I am. Um, you know, I don't need to fake anything or or say something because at the end of the day, like I said, I could just stay home and do nothing and or I could do something. So when you do something like what I'm doing, you're exposing yourself as a target to get hit by whatever. But, you know, you got to understand that you can't let that dissuade you. I never get dissuaded by negative commentary because at the end of the day, when you act and you do the right thing, that always prevails. Uh, technology has obviously become a big part of your life. You talk um, talking about it. It's made you successful in business. And when we spoke at, um, I guess it was at Mario's press conference, you talked about how you want to take some of that wherewithal with technology and bring it to Miami football and, and, and find ways to help uh, the football team win through technology. Tell us a little bit about that. So we opened up an entity called The Time Is Now. I promise anybody who's involved with the University of Miami, there will be no better technology for NIL, for NFTs, for understanding the game, understanding the health of the athletes, following the health of the athletes, making them recover, making them perform better, uh, studying the game. There will be no university that will have better technology than what we will employ either indirectly through our own resources or in conjunction with the University of Miami as it pertains to anything that we do directly with them. Uh, it's not going to be any better than what we're going to be able to do. This is the real deal. Uh, we have the most sophisticated technology, in my opinion, when it comes to healthcare data and when it comes to many facets of blockchain technology, uh, you know, artificial intelligence, and we got some real firepower behind us. Uh, I'm, I have a, a deal with Palantir, which is a very strong and big company in the United States of America. We really are at the forefront of technology. Miami is the epicenter now of technology. Uh, because of what we've built, our company is, I believe, the second largest company in Florida and one of the top companies in the country and what, in what we do, we're number one. Uh, and I never stop. I don't let grass grow under my feet. Things are gonna be moving. We're already moving very quickly. Uh, we do things quickly. We do them professionally. We do them legally. We don't do anything that's you know, gonna be a, a, an issue for either the players or the university. We're an open book. We're transparent. But I do have the fortune of having three kids. They're all super involved. Uh, you know, they all have their own talent, uh, and together between me and my three kids, and obviously the, uh, the entire firepower that we have behind us, it's, it's a force to be reckoned with. So, when you put all this together, stadium, helping the university, all the other things you're doing, um, like, what's your dream? What, where, where are you hoping that this all ends? So, I've always been a visionary, and because I kind of envision things in the future. So <clears throat> I envision already having a stadium, having all the crowd there, having an incredible football team, 
with an amazing coach, everybody, you know, super pumped and getting that first kickoff, whether we're receiving or kicking off of that first game and knowing that at least I had a little part of, of to do that. That's the legacy that people leave. Uh, and that's what stays with you. Uh, you can make all the money in the world that you want, but if you don't do anything with it, I like to be challenged. I like to always be innovating and being able to create. Because <clears throat> that's where I stay busy. It's what drives me. That's why I sleep very little, because I always have the idea of what I can do, and I'm moving things along. But it's not just the University of Miami. You know, I'm bringing boat races back to the Miami Beach. They've been gone for a long time. I'm bringing power boat races. We're doing that before uh, Formula One, uh, which is uh, in May of uh, 2022. I'm bringing the boat races the week before. So I'm doing a lot of things that bring and stimulate the economy. Uh, just the other day, uh, I got the marching band, uh, a gig so that the marching band can raise funds for themselves at the University of Miami. So I'm trying to help every facet of the university, but I don't want people to think that it's just the university because I'm out here to help whoever I can uh, in whatever way that I can within reason. I was born and raised in this community. Uh, I have the ability to give back. Uh, more importantly, because you know it's great to go to a football game, but when you can save lives and I can you know tap into the youth and the elderly and keep people away from drugs and keep people away from from drinking and driving and, and, and all those things that we all want, then that's really uh, fulfilling. And in teaching my kids that and seeing that they're operating under the same premise that I operate under, it's for me very fulfilling. How fast do you think you can make a, a football stadium for Miami happen? The actual build out is two years. Mm -hmm. um, the actual plans, and everything involved to make it work, I would say it's probably another 10 months to 12 months. So you're looking at about three years. But I think that before you get to the actual day that the stadium would be built, the excitement leading up to that and seeing the evolution of it is exciting as well. Uh, and I think that attracts a lot of people. I think people have been wanting this for a long time. I think we're kind of like just there or somewhat in the in the spectrum of ah, things are kind of dead this has brought new life to everybody well people are just getting to know you listening to you i think they're going to be happy that you're that you're on the case now yes and uh it could be some exciting times ahead for miami football fans so what i would say is if you look at my track record when i say i'm going to do something i do it i'm not one of those individuals that says something and then doesn't do it. when i say something it's because i'm doing it and that's this is one of those Alrighty, John. Well, we thank you so much for your time today. Thank you.